Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Monday the 9th of August 2021 and we're producing our gold and silver Monday morning update and gold price and silver price forecast. Last night we saw gold and silver plummet further and then recover some of their gains. But will that recovery continue or is it just a temporary relief to lower prices ahead? Let's take a look and find out. Well, good morning, this bright but cold Monday morning, 9th of August, 2021, 09.21 a.m. GMT plus one. Now, last night, what an exciting time. We saw the flash crash or flash crash in gold and silver. Then to see it recover, not all of its losses, but it was a sight to behold and a scary one for those like us who were involved in contracts for difference derivatives. Yes, for those who accuse Illuminati Silver of only wanting prices to go down, we actually bought some CFDs expecting the price to go up. That we did on Friday. However, we saw what happened over the weekend. You saw the videos that we covered, which we'll show in a few minutes, and we had to get out urgently. But we did so on the prediction that the market would initially go up, which it did for about one minute after opening, which was at 11 p.m. GMT plus one, and then it fell, and boy, did it fall. And this is the main headline. Gold's flash crash subsides as silver claws back morning losses. Let's take a look at that, shall we? Because this is the real news for us today. Gold recovered from a flash crash, or a flash crash, that saw prices drop $60 in minutes on bets the Federal Reserve may soon start paying back its massive monetary stimulus. Now, for those of you who follow us, you will see that on the weekend, we produced, on, sa on August the 7th, Saturday, why gold and silver crashed on Friday, and then gold and silver plummet further thoughts which we published on sunday and in fact gold fell to exactly the low level of 1680 or just above that we predicted could happen but we didn't think it would hold and it hasn't so far but let's go back to this here spot bullion fell more than four percent and silver slumped as much as 7% as the sell-off following Friday's better-than-expected employment figures initially accelerated at the start of Asian trading. Both markets swiftly paired losses and were down less than 2% by midday in Singapore. Gold's been losing ground on investor concerns that an improving economy and rising inflation will spur the Fed to pull back on its unprecedented support. American employers added the most jobs in nearly a year in July and the unemployment rate declined faster than forecast and we covered that in our two videos. Dallas Fed President Robert Kaplan's comments that the central bank should start tapering its asset purchases sooner rather than later and in a gradual manner further fanned expectations that stimulus will be reined in. The jobs data beat expectations by a mile last week, which led to both gold and silver selling off into the close. This morning we're seeing the overhang of that, as perhaps those traders a bit late to the party are panic selling the open, said John Feeney, business development manager at Guardian Vaults. With low liquidity at this time of the week, combining with a large number of stop losses being triggered, we've seen a volatile open to start the week. Bullion was down 1% at 17.45 an ounce by 2.17 in Singapore, 
after earlier touching its lowest since March and coming close to its lowest in more than a year. In the futures market, over 3,000 contracts changed hands in one minute window, equivalent to over 500 million notional value, as activity surged in a typically quiet trading period. Spot silver was down 1.6% at $23.94 an ounce. It's a bit too early to tell, but this sort of capitulation usually coincides with a significant low in the market, said Feeney. Though we are seeing demand for physical metals coming through this morning on the buy side. And we're not surprised by that. Not at all. So before we look a little bit further into how the economics is working, let's look at some other news. BBC climate report is code red for humanity. Heating from humans has caused irreparable damage to the earth that may get worse in coming decades. And a report that's come out, I think, from China has actually highlighted that we are to expect a significant rise in global temperatures over the next 10 or 20 years. Or in fact, I think it might even be sooner. Let's have a quick glance if this will show us. Scientists warn that the planet will warm to 1.5% Celsius in the next two decades, so 20 years then, without drastic moves to eliminate greenhouse gas pollution. The scare is on. And this is why there will be so much movement towards green investments and those investing in companies that have anything to do with green and environmental friendliness. You can expect those shares to rise. And those companies that are ignoring it, you will expect those shares eventually to fall. U.S. Aide to New York Governor resigns amid scandal. Melissa De Rossa worked as a senior aide to Andrew Cuomo, who has been accused of sexual harassment. This is quite amusing. Tobacco giant raises bid for respiratory drug mate maker. Philip Morris is seeking to buy Vectura, which makes treatments for diseases such as asthma. Hmm. What caused that asthma in the first place? Or exacerbated it? Firefighters tackle historic California wildfire. And broadly, it's just general news. Looks, look at the dollar. 92.8. It was closer to 93. It was at 1.92.92. Being as low as 92.73. It's paired back just a little this morning. Energy. Well, good news in a way. Both... WTI crude and Brent crude are down over $2 and nearly $2.50. Stocks, well, we covered on our weekly update what happened to the Dow and the American exchanges. They were broadly up, all under half a percent, but up. Asia Pacific markets overnight, they're now closed, were up between, well, up to well, CSI up one and a half or 1.3 percent, the others under half a percent. Uh, UK and Europe down slightly the euro index is just just about 0.01 percent in the green or in the blue depending which way you look at it the rest are in the red by about a third of one percent so economic calendar today job openings uh, not going to have a dramatic impact on the market let's see what gold is doing i'll refresh the page so it's immediately up to date we can see look at this we've gone to 1680 in our view it didn't quite get there Frankly, even though we've had this recovery, and even though we know people are buying the physical, all we need is a little bit further news, further economic good news, to suggest that the economy is growing. And unfortunately, the downward pressure on gold and silver will continue. If, however, there is news that come out that questions that, you'll see a sharp uptick. Look at it. Ah, here we go. This was the rise. There we go. Can you see? Let's widen this. This is the point we sold our longs, if you like, or our CFDs, uh, positive CFDs. Look, see that tiny tick there? It was in silver. We got out. We actually made a profit. Don't get jealous. On $1,500, it was a, a couple dollars profit. And then the crash came. And Frankly, had I not fallen asleep, which I did, because we're now looking at midnight our time, I would have taken out another call 
below $23. Because I don't believe silver should be below $23 in reality. And certainly not in one, one fair swoop. But I fell asleep. So I missed out on this rise, which would have given quite a significant profit, actually. Shouldn't gamble on gold and silver. Just buy the, buy the metal and hold on to it. But nevertheless, we've got enough metal. We're just trading now. Trading the rise and falls. And that would have given quite, not a huge profit, but quite a nice little fillip there. So silver at the moment, it was 23.90. Let me refresh the page. Yeah, it's going down again. Look, 23.85. Expect downward pressure here. Sorry to say that. We take no delight in it. Some people think we do. We don't. We hold reasonable amounts of gold and silver, more so gold, really, and certainly in value terms than silver. But we hold both. Of course, we would love them to go to the moon. We'd be far better off financially if that was the case. Cryptocurrencies. Taking a slight hit this morning, but look at this market cap. 177 trillion. And that's even been down 3.74% of the last 24 hours. Bitcoin and Ethereum are down, but they've had phenomenally, phenomenally large runs to the upside. And really, for now, that's it. Let me now show you what I did on my trading. On Friday, when the market fell after the news, we actually started to buy $500 in three tranches, as you can see here, 6th of August, between 1604, 1632, but for the first tranche was at 1531. We started to purchase contracts for difference on two times leverage, silver. Because we thought, in all honesty, that at 2429 and 2428 and 2431, the price was too low. We were out at the time when we did this. When I got back and we did the analysis over the weekend because we practice what we preach, we could see that the market was going to fall further on Monday. But we were anticipating from speaking to analysts, we were anticipating a quick blip up and then a fall. And that did happen as we just showed you. But it was literally, literally 30 seconds to a minute. And we managed to get out of silver, admittedly at a profit. <laughs> Not a lot when you consider how much are we talking about? $4 profit against a $1,510 investment on two times leverage, which would make that 3000 And that fall would have plunged us into significant losses. So at 24 as you can see, 24, 33, and because they were separate contracts, we had to close them separately, and one was at 24, 32, was the closure. Now, compared to the current price of 23, 85, that was a good sale. If we were the sort of people wanting silver to fall and anticipating it to fall, we would have taken basically puts in silver. In other words, we would have sold CFDs and then bought back at the lower level and would have made quite a lot of money, particularly when that horrendous dip occurred. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Please give us a thumbs up. By all means, do subscribe and, of course, press the bell sign. Please look into our videos. Usually what we say comes about. We may not be exactly spot on, but we're far closer than those pumpers who last week, last week, were telling you, silver's going to the moon. I'm saying no more about pumpers. Until next time. Disclaimer. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.